I'll use CLI tools to mess my files. Things like MV, CD, LS, RM, and things like that. I'll use a GUI file manager. Right now, I'm using PCMan FM. And if I'm using something like Caden Live or Discord where they have built-in file managers, occasionally I'll make use of them as well. But I also like to use a terminal file manager. And right now what I'm using is a program called LF. I've used plenty of others in the past though, and there are so many more out there that I've never seen. But whenever I do a video on a terminal file manager, I always get some fairly similar questions. Things like, why even bother with a terminal file manager? Everything you can do with it can be done with standard Unix commands. Things like CD, LS, MV, and things like that. And then on the other side, all of the important stuff you can do from your terminal can be done through a GUI, so why even bother with a terminal file manager? And I totally understand the concern because the CLI and the GUI approach are such different ways of working, they basically feel like polar opposite use cases, whereas the terminal file manager, at least most of them, generally sit like somewhere in the middle. They are jack of all trades, master of none. But I, and probably a lot of people watching this video, really like having a terminal file manager. So being a jack of all trades doesn't mean you have no use case whatsoever. What it means, though, is the use case isn't as obvious as some of the alternatives. One of those things being keybinds are generally going to be easier to type than writing out a Unix command. Now, most of the Unix commands are relatively short. Things like, you know, CD to go to a new directory, MV to move a file, CP to copy a file, and things like that. But let's say I want to go to my config directory. In LF, all I need to do is press GC, and it goes straight there. Go to my scripts directory, GS, and then dot. Go straight there. Go back to home, GH. And sure, you can do all of that stuff directly with CD, but it is going to take a bit more time. And then there are things like moving and copying things around. Sure, you can use things like regexes and globs to work out this exact pattern you need to use to move all of these potentially unrelated things to the same place. Let's say uh, this directory here, this directory here, and uh, this file and this file here. These things don't really have anything that I can see in common with each other, so you'd need to go and run either separate commands or sit there thinking for like 5 or 10 minutes about what you would actually need to do to do it all in one command. Whereas here, I can just select them, press Y, they're copied, and I can put them then literally wherever I want. This selection process is basically the same thing I would do inside of a GUI, for example. And unless there is a discernible pattern, selecting things is always going to be quicker. Another thing is at this point, most systems, even relatively lightweight systems, can brute force most of your day-to-day -day tasks. But you might want to have something a bit lighter. Maybe you don't want to just waste resources for the sake of wasting resources. And a terminal solution is always going to be lighter than basically any graphical solution, with the exception of really specific circumstances. And a solution like a terminal file manager is going to provide you with most of the functionality of the GUI counterpart. There are some things where that's not going to be the case with things that are explicitly graphical, things like drag and drop functionality, for example, but there are certain ways you can get around that with, like, the Dragon application, which I looked at like maybe two or so years ago. Also, most of the time your terminal file manager is just rendering text. There are some exceptions with doing like image injection inside of the terminal, but it's mainly going to be text. And what this means is you can render it exactly the same way inside of the TTY. So if your window manager or desktop environment breaks, or for whatever reason you need to be on the TTY, you can keep using the exact same tool. It's not something I need every single day, and even when I am on the TTY, it's not like that's a required feature, but it certainly is nice to have. Now, the actions I'm using to, like, jump between directories, to copy files, to, like, even chmod things, for example, all of these are preset commands that I've got bound to certain keys. This is potentially a bit of a limitation compared to the CLI counterpart where I could just write any command that I want. But a lot of terminal file managers do kind of get around this solution, either by letting you open up a subshell 
or in many cases, being able to just write a command directly in the application. The drawback of a subshell to the shell opened up inside of another shell, in this case inside of your application, is that it doesn't really integrate as nicely into the application as you might expect. It can be done if a lot of work is done into making that happen, but just opening up a subshell doesn't inherently give you integration into the app. Whereas when you have a command line inside of the application, this is obviously going to integrate well into it, but you usually miss out a lot of your general shell features, like maybe tab completion and things like that. But regardless, either way isn't really a big deal, because this is a file manager, and there are only certain operations that you actually would want to run in the context of managing your files. And from my personal experience, it's not very difficult to just add everything you need. And then if there are any one-off edge cases where you're missing something, this will basically do the job. Now this is sort of just a personal taste thing, but I like a fairly modern design, a fairly minimal, a fairly sleek design. And due to this just being in text, it's pretty much something that just comes naturally. You can make fairly complex looking terminal designs, things like say BTOP for example, but even in this case, it's still fairly sleek looking. Whereas over on the GUI side, it's really, really easy to ruin a design. If you have like mismatching icons and things like that, it's gonna look really weird. It's much harder to do that with text. And the nice thing about something being in your terminal, with the exception of true color applications, which use the entire RGB space, like BTOP for example, is by default, and they don't really have a choice, they're going to respect your terminal color scheme. It may not pick the colors in the order that you'd like to pick them, but the only colors it knows about are the colors that are set inside of your terminal. Now, this is going to be true if you use a GUI application and you stick with a single GUI framework. Let's say you want to go with like Qt or GTK, it doesn't really matter what you pick. But when you start crossing different frameworks and different framework versions, things can start to look really, really weird. Now, I can't speak for every single terminal file manager, but amongst a lot of them, things like Ranger, LF, XPLR, and things like that, a lot of them are extremely easy to extend, and extending them is basically what you're expected to do. In the case of Ranger, all you need to do is modify some Python. The application itself is written in Python as well, so modifying the whole app isn't really that difficult. In the case of LF, generally what you'll do is just write a shell script. XPLR, if I remember correctly, is with Lua. And none of these are very complex languages, and in many cases, you've probably used the language before. Maybe not Lua, unless you also happen to use Emacs. In the case of LF, for example, you want to write a script for it because out of the box, it's basically useless. All it is, is a bad version of Ranger written in Go. But if you take that time and extend it to get it to the point where it fits your workflow, it is incredibly useful. I'm not here to say that you should be using this solution, you should be using that solution. I use all three of these different methods. I use the CLI, I use the GUI, and I use a terminal file manager or a TUI file manager. And I think all of these are really great solutions. If you've never tried out a terminal file manager before, I highly recommend you go and try out something like Ranger and just see if it's any good. If you don't like it, you can always just go and uninstall it and go back to what you were doing before. So what do you guys use for your file manager? Is it a CLI solution? Is it a TUI solution? Or is it a GUI? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting to pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.